This is one of the best blasters Hasbro has ever put out. And uh, with just some very, very light modifications that virtually anybody can do, he already has it doing this. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite units in Warpath, the A-12 Matilda Mark II. The A-12 Matilda Mark II is a heavily armored British tank which entered service in 1939. Dubbed an infantry tank, the A-12 Matilda II was designed specifically to have massive amounts of armor that caused other armored weapon systems at the time to merely bounce off its exterior. After the initial failures of the Matilda 1, the Matilda 2 clapped everything in its path, featuring a weapon system that punched through the much lighter tanks around it, and armor thick enough that it shrugged off any hits it might receive in return. The Matilda 2 fundamentally required anything hoping to punch through its armor to invest in bigger, heavier weapons. And in Warpath, the Matilda 2 is an awesome weapon to have in your arsenal. Warpath is a real-time strategy game on a massive scale, featuring a huge amount of different units to choose from and multiple ways to customize each and every single one of them, leading to an absurd amount of strategies for you to pull off while you start your conquest across the world. This is war, and you're the commander. Select each unit you want in your army. Choose what to outfit them with, and utilize the terrain to give yourself every single advantage there is. And to get your hands on weapon systems like the powerful Matilda Mark II, you've got to draw cards to unlock it and other units to add to your forces. So if you have the 5-star A12 Matilda II, which is a heavy tank, it means it treads medium tanks on the field, as they don't have the firepower to punch through its armor while being unable to survive return shots. Meanwhile, super heavy tanks and tank hunters are going to be a huge problem for the A12 as they aren't fast enough to deal with the higher firepower or punch through larger, heavier chassis. Heavy tanks like the Matilda II give your ground forces something to lean on during battle, and the Matilda II specializes against heavy buildings and fortifications during sieges. You can also upgrade your A12 Matilda II by rebuilding accessories, which are based on historic facts. The Matilda 2 is a solid option to have in your forces as you expand your base, and can be a valuable tool for Camp Liberty forces in their battles against Raven. Don't sleep on this absolute armored monster and go get it in Warpath. You can find Warpath on both the Google Play and the App Store. Use my promo code WPIAGG and get some extra gifts right at the start of your game. You know, it's kind of scary to think about. Elite 2.0, just about every single blaster in that entire line has sucked unmitigated disaster through a straw. Just about the only blaster I ever liked in Elite 2.0 was the Turbine from the original launch, and that blaster had a lot of problems. Not only was it clipped together in a bunch of places, but it was also glued together in a spot, which meant it was practically unmoddable. You can do it, it's just a lot more aggravating than it should be. And that's the scary thought about the Moto Blitz here, the latest in Elite 2.0. Because the Moto Blitz has me very, very excited, but the problem is, if this thing can't be modded, it's not gonna be worth it. Or maybe it is, because this thing only costs $42 at my local Target. This is one of the first times I ever bought a Nerf Blaster where I thought the price tag was actually very, very good. $42 for all of this is a steal in terms of modern Hasbro. To put that into perspective, which, uh, just judging by the box, is practically just a longer Nerf Ultra amp, but I haven't done the review yet, so you should probably get subscribed for when this video is dropping. It'll be very, very soon. $50 for that, 42 for this, and this seems better in just about every single possible way. Two blasting modes. It's funny, this thing looks like Hasbro did one of the Nerf modding community's integrations and then sold it as an actual product. It doesn't look like it belongs there at all. Removable 10 dart clip. Two blasting modes, pump to pressure, because this is not a hamp. This is an actual air tank. Because the last time we saw an air tank in Nerf was with a Nerf Modulus Mediator Barrel. And it requires four AA batteries to operate. So we pretty much know what the actual performance of the Dark Blaster is going to be like. The actual performance of the Air Blaster. That, that's going to be fun to see. Grab it! Tank! Best match! So what I was worried about with this thing was it doesn't show you the other side. I mean, even if you can see it somewhere online, as I've seen with Hasbro when they put pictures up on Amazon or something like that, they never show you the other side of the blaster like they're afraid to reveal its secrets, probably for the fact that there is actually no paint on the other side of the blaster as per usual, but for $42, I'm not going to complain with what we get here. But looking at this thing, it's kind of hard to tell where the flywheel cage was. The flywheel cage and everything should be uh, pretty, pretty normal. And it, it looks pretty normal. That's a, that's a comfy grip. That's, and it's just about perfect for my small hands anyway. That's not too bad. All right. No issues so far. 
the uh, scope is uh, practically unusable. Uh, it's actually unusable. I don't understand the purpose of it right now. Because even if you could get a cheek weld and look through it into the little plastic reticle thing, there's a big, huge orange front post in front of it that completely obscures your vision anyway. Seems like an afterthought, but the actual stock, it's a little short, but it feels pretty good for me. Tactical rail on top of the faux scope, tactical rails on both the sides of the barrels. Despite the fact that this thing looks horribly like it's not supposed to be here, the blaster looks and feels really freaking good. Battery door is located right above the trigger and it takes four AA batteries. Battery tray is pretty small. So if you were planning on upgrading this for like a LiPo battery, I think you can fit a decent one in here. It's just the connector might be an issue. And I should mention, thank you very much to Lucha Thor for picking this up for me. And of course, also for the batteries. Thank you, Lucha. You're welcome. Purrs like a kitten, not like a lion, like a Dark Zone blaster would. Mag release. Very nice. I'm quite happy with that one. We're just going to load you up. The uh, front air-powered shotgun holds six darts. And I believe it launches all of those in one shot. Enough darts to load the shotgun twice and the actual magazine for the blaster once. And looking at the included instructions, you're supposed to give the air tank eight pumps before firing. Well, we're going to try the flywheels. Trigger pull is nice and smooth. It's a stock nerf flywheeler. If you've ever used one, you know exactly what to expect out of this thing. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, give it two more just for fun. Uh, this orange thing is rubbing against this white plastic here. It's already leaving a mark and it feels horrible, but there's actually a blast button on both sides for the air tank. Let's see what happens. That was competent. That, that was pretty good. I mean, it's a shotgun. It's meant to be used in close quarters and we'll see what the actual range is like, but that was pretty good. Very minor gripes that probably don't matter to anybody but me. And only 42 freaking dollars. I, what have you done with my Hasbro? Alrighty, Nerf Moto Blitz. 10 shots across the chronograph and see what velocity we are getting. Oops. All right, well, seems like an average around 66, 65 or so. Now the fun part's gonna be the actual blitz part of the Moto Blitz. I'm only gonna load one dart into the thing. It uses an air restrictor, so. 44. That's not awful. It's just not, uh, not great. Yeah, 42. I'll do one more. I'll do the bottom. And even less than that. Okay, well, that's not good, but you're not going to be using it with a single shot anyway. Honestly, it performs pretty much exactly how you would expect something like this to perform, which is honestly for Nerf, it's perfectly fine. I mean, there's not a whole lot of other blasters out there that have an undermounted blaster on it. And better yet, this is not a hamp like what you'd get with like the Demolisher. This is an actual air tank and it's a shotgun and the overall length, the blaster and everything like that leads itself well to this platform. And it's another one of those designs where if you're a younger nerfer, this would work perfectly fine for you. And if you're older, yeah, there might be some minor hiccups. You can't use the integrated scope. This 
stacks a little too short, but it's still perfectly serviceable. There wasn't any expectations that this thing was going to completely rewrite the rules of the hobby, but for the price tag for what you get, a lot of people are going to be happy, and that's where the video should end. But it doesn't. This is one of the best blasters Hasbro has ever put out, at least to me right now, because I'm not the smartest crayon in the egg tray, but this blaster, there's one thing about it that completely fundamentally rewrites everything, and that's the fact that you can take it apart. I know, that's a mind-blowing thing in 2022, especially from Elite 2.0. In fact, this may be one of the only Elite 2.0 blasters that's actually worth taking apart. And I'm not talking about just the flywheel blaster, this thing is also moddable. How do I know? Because Luchathor already did that. And uh, with just some very, very light modifications that virtually anybody can do, hot glue over some air release holes and tightening down the air restrictor uh, or overpressure release valve thing, he already has it doing this. <laughs> that is just simply ridiculous. Basically just tightening down the screw on the overpressure release valve. Turned this undermounted shotgun thing from a comical yet maybe useful situational fanning of six darts into an absolute monster. It blew away all expectations and that's not even close to the final form of what this thing can do. Not only would you sooner get this thing firing farther than the main blaster with no materials whatsoever besides a screwdriver and maybe some hot glue to fill in some of those air release holes, but this is stock. It is a smart AR blaster on the bottom here, and that means mod potential is not as easy as it could be, but I don't see a reason why you couldn't just cut off the smart AR stuff because that shouldn't affect the actual tank whatsoever, and then either re barrel it for brass or completely change what ammo type this shoots multiple mega maybe even multiple mega xl this thing may be possible doing that but of course with a first release kind of thing we haven't dwelled that far into it had this blaster came out seven years ago it would be fondly remembered as one of the best things nerf has ever made because this is what made us excited for the hobby stock performance perfectly fine for anybody who wants it this thing functions perfectly fine stock but then you throw on the mod potential and it's almost limitless what you could possibly do with this platform and it's unique really what other things do you have that function like this it's been a popular modification to add shotgun things to the bottom of blasters for years now now nerf has made one with it built in and it is exceptionally good but what blows my mind the most it's $42. That is a really reasonable price from Hasbro. And while I know this is essentially just a Raven with an undermounted shotgun on it, it's a Raven with an undermounted shotgun on it for $42 US. And why I might have some minor gripes with ergonomics and stuff like that, maybe even that sound when it's pumping, those do not detract from the overall score I would give this blaster, which is a 10 out of 10. This is one blaster. If you have not bought Nerf in a very long time because Dart Zone is just bending them over backwards, this is the one you should buy. You could, if you really wanted to, build this out of like a Raven and some kind of undermounted shotgun thing, but you can get it in one package here. There's a huge bright future for a blaster like this as long as it sticks around for a little while. And I'm just happy that Hasbro has finally given us something good from Elite 2.0. I just don't understand why it took this long. Hasbro, I hope you're paying attention because this is how you get people excited for a product. You don't screw us over. Use actual springs behind triggers and stuff like that instead of plastic that's going to break eventually. You put screws in it so we can take it apart and fix it if things get broken. Not design a blaster that's eventually going to fail no matter what we do and then give us no way to take it apart to fix it. But I guarantee you for most people, stock or modded, the Moto Bliss is gonna be something they're gonna remember fondly, unless they somehow outdo this, which, uh, well, we're back into that realm of who knows what Nerf is gonna do next, because I never expected this blaster to even be remotely good. Had it not had no mod potential, it would be a six, maybe a seven out of 10. But since I can mod it, there's zero problems with it. At least until somebody smarter than me opens it up and 
find some nagging detail I missed that completely shoots down everything I love about the blaster, but that shouldn't be a problem because Dr. Flux did a preliminary rewire mod on it, hooked it up to a 2S LiPo, put Valkyries in it, put bigger wheels, and we got 100 FPS out of it with a stock cage. So I already know the flywheel cage can be modded to some degree. And that's why I love having friends like Dr. Flux and Luchathor around because had they not been here for this thing dropping, this information might not be known. So please make sure you thank them down in that comment section because holy crap, the Moto Blitz is good. And that's all I've got for you. I'm Walk on my 7 Thank you very much for watching this video. Chances are you got to the end, you like what I do here. So please hit like, get subscribed, leave a comment, ring the bell, do all that algorithmic garbage to help the channel grow so you can help the hobby grow. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video and uh, make sure you do get subscribed because I have multiple new blasters to show off here. You gotta up, up.